Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to be talking about language. Now we touched on some of the aspects of language in Quark Express when we looked at spelling, but I want to go a little bit deeper today and I want to wrap things together. So let's go to the screen. Uh, and over here, I've just got from Wikipedia, which is open source and free for all, uh, some text uh, in Latin, some text in English, uh, and some text uh, in French. Uh, and I've got the, uh, the subject in Latin, uh, English, French, and in Dutch. This is very famous, cogito ergo sum. It's the one bit of Latin most people know. Uh, I think, therefore I am. In French, je pense, donc je suis. Uh, and of course in Dutch, ik denk, dus ik ben. And um, this is quite a good example of uh, a multilingual page. Um, Descartes was writing uh, in French, uh, but also in Latin, uh, mixing the two. Uh, and any discussion of this has got to have Latin and English. Now, obviously, every time it comes up with cogito ergo sum, uh, the spell checker is going to say, well, that's incorrect. So, um, what we learned previously, and I'm going to cover all those things again, you haven't got to go back and look for it, is that if you get a character, you can change uh, from English, uh, I have it international, to other languages. Now, Quark Express does not come with a Latin spell checker uh, or understanding of the Latin language. So, for anything which doesn't do, just put none in. And that will mean that the regular spell checker won't look for it. Now, we talked uh, previously about uh, an extension uh, which is uh, offering the Hun spell checker, uh, which you can get. And that's from Creation Orts, and that allows you to select a different spell checking engine. So, although it can do the Quark Express engine, you can also get a Hun spell and then download whatever dictionary you want to use. Uh, but for now, we're going to work with the built in features. So uh, I can set the, uh, the Latin text uh, to uh, language none. We'll do that. I can have the English text, which is currently uh, in language, uh, international English, uh, which I think is the language of, of Wikipedia. Uh, and um, uh, so that's English international. I've got here the French text, which I'm going to set into French of France. In fact, I already did that. And the Dutch over here, I'm going to set that to uh, Dutch, uh, French over here to French for France, English, and then uh, Latin, none. Uh, and if we now run the spell checker for the entire document, so uh, check spelling uh, layout, uh, it's going to say that it doesn't know the name uh, René uh, in English down here. Uh, which it wouldn't do, it's not an English name. I can just add that in uh, or ignore it. Uh, it's going to want to ask for a supplementary dictionary uh, at this point. So uh, if you're working in a different language, just create that dictionary. Uh, that's great. Uh, also actually very helpful if you're going to have a lot of words which aren't in the regular language. Uh, and uh, you can then go through that glossary afterwards. But it's also finding in that English text some French words. Let's come back to this. Um, uh, and we're going to see that over here we've got je pense donc je suis. Uh, now it's going to be a lot easier if we do this with a style sheet. So let's go to a style sheet and we're going to create a, a, a style sheet for French which is going to be based on normal. So if I change normal, uh, then it will change that. Uh, and uh, we'll make that French France. And now every time I come up with a bit of French, uh, I can just tag that as French. It's going to be in uh, each one of these. Uh, French, good. Uh, and we can do the same thing uh, with Latin. Uh, so again, base it on style sheet normal. Uh, we're going to make that Latin, and we're going to say that the language this time is going to be none, uh, because it doesn't know Latin, uh, and we'll just select that uh, for Latin, and as we come down here, cogito ergo sum, uh, that's going to be in Latin, uh, cogito ergo sum, again, it's going to be in Latin, 
uh, and uh, and so on. Ego sum ego exista is also Latin. So let's run that spell checker again, uh, and now lay out. Uh, okay, it's now again finding someone's name it doesn't know in the international English bit. I can add that into my auxiliary dictionary. Um, uh, again, uh, I've, I've, I've found a bit more Latin. I didn't spot that. We'll skip that for now. Uh, skip that for now. Skip that for now. Uh, skip that for now. And spell check is complete because it has correctly identified that uh, these other sections are in uh, here, none, uh, or here in French. Well, that's all very easy. Uh, and uh, we did cover it before. Now, uh, I want to import uh, du contrat social, uh, which is by uh, Rousseau, uh, and I've got it as uh, a text file, which I downloaded. Now, when I first did this, I'm going to go back there, uh, the Mac uh, that I'm working on defaulted to Mac Roman X Mac Roman. I've no idea what that actually means, but these are different encodings which uh, files can be in. And one of the problems with text files is they only contain the text. They contain nothing else. They contain no information about the encoding which has been used. So let's just import that now and see what happens. Um, so uh, as you can see, we are all over the place when it comes to accents. Wouldn't be a problem in English, uh, but uh, this is just completely wrong. So let's delete that. And we'll start again. Uh, and we're going to go back to du contre social. And I think this is in Unicode UTF-8. Now, I'm going to go with Unicode UTF-8 first, because if I try to import UTF-16, which offers many, many more characters, uh, and it isn't UTF-16, uh, the machine is liable to crash. Uh, so we'll go with 8 first and see what happens. Now, I've got convert quotes on. Uh, there actually aren't many quotes in here, but I've, I've put one in just to catch us out. So let's open that. Okay, uh, Command O takes me to the page view, and um, okay, that's fine. So uh, yeah, we've now got our uh, accents in, I think, correctly. Let's have a look at this one. So we're going to just zoom in uh, on uh, here, and je uh, tâcherai. So it's got the accent circonflexe. Uh, correct there. But uh, we've got another couple of problems. For a start, the entire thing has come in in English International. Now, imagine I've got uh, not one or two style sheets as I have here, but I've got 20 or 30. Imagine I'm, I'm doing different editions of this uh, in different languages. As I've done all my style sheets uh, in English, uh, and now uh, I've imported the French version, and in every single style sheet, it's giving uh, language, English, international. I don't really want to spend uh, the next half of the day going through every single one of those style sheets, partly because it takes a long time, but also partly because it's quite likely to get one of them wrong. And the language is not just affecting the spell checker. The language is also affecting the hyphenations. Let's just go to um, the uh, suggested hyphenations here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to select quelque, and we'll go to suggested hyphenations. Uh, and as you can see, English doesn't have the word quelque, so it doesn't know how to hyphenate it. And so if I was trying to hyphenate here, uh, it really doesn't know what to do. Okay, how can we fix this? Well, I, I could go for every one, uh, but I don't want to. Uh, let's in fact just change that one to French. and go back to that suggested hyphenation for calque. Uh, hyphen, suggested hyphenation. Uh, still doesn't want to hyphenate it. Maybe we don't hyphenate that. But um, either way, uh, rather than doing that, I can do convert project language and convert the entire language, all languages, uh, into uh, French. Or, for example, if I had a document which was in uh, Brazilian Portuguese, uh, but I actually wanted it to be in uh, European Portuguese, I could just change uh, the Brazilian Portuguese into European Portuguese. In this particular case, it won't make any difference. But if I change my English international into French, that's going to change not only all the text, but every style sheet, uh, except for the ones already tagged. So let's come back to these. 
my normal is tagged English International. My Latin is tagged uh, Language None. And my French is tagged uh, French of France. Uh, if I now do my convert project language, I'm going to change not all languages because that would ruin my Latin, but just the English International uh, into French of France. Uh, it's complete, didn't take very long at all. If I now go back to my Latin, I will see that this has retained its language none. Um, but of course the French was already language French, France, and my normal is now also language French, France. So what that is doing is in every single place that uh, it references a language which is English International, it now changes it to French, but anything else it leaves. Well, okay, uh, there was another hold up there, which you probably spotted, which is that in French, we don't have these inverted commas usually. We usually use uh, what we call guillemets, um, which if you don't actually speak French, is spelled a bit like guillemot. Um, uh, they don't look like this. So what can we do? Well, let's go to preferences. Uh, and we're going to go to input settings. This is a new feature uh, in Quark Express 2017. So this is not in Quark Express 2016 or earlier. But we can now, at the application level, not at the document level, but at the application level, change double quotes to Gimme uh, and single quotes to uh, the single version of that, uh, which I think is that one. Uh, and now, it's not going to change it on what we've got. It's just an import feature. So let's go back uh, and uh, again, import, du contre social, uh, convert quotes, Unicode UTF-8, and in it comes, we'll do uh, right at the end there, we'll go right to the beginning. And here we see that it's coming correctly. And that's a new feature in Quark Express 2017. Well, that kind of almost wraps it up for, for language, but there's just a couple more things to think about. The first one is that the conventions in different languages differ, and they also differ from time. So uh, Descartes, uh, sorry, not Descartes, Rousseau, uh, thought it was quite normal to put uh, an ampersand in instead of an and or an a. Uh, and you don't see that as much in French. Um, what you do see uh, is that numbers are quite often written as numbers, even for small numbers. So in English, the rule in fiction uh, tends to be that numbers uh, under 100 are written out uh, and numbers over 100 are put as numbers. In uh, non-fiction, the convention is usually that numbers under 10 are written out as words, uh, but numbers over 10 uh, are given as the, the digits. In French, you quite often see uh, that all numbers are given just as the number, uh, even when you have septième, uh, and you then put the, the, the number seven, and then em, which you would never see in English. So if you are typesetting in a language you're not familiar with, uh, then it is important to check the conventions. Well, let's summarize because it's been quite a short topic. So the most basic thing you're going to work with uh, in Quark Express, if you're working in multiple languages, is use the character style sheet to set the language. You can set all the character style sheets and everything else together uh, by using utility change language. And that's really important. If you're working regularly with languages which Quark Express doesn't directly support, consider getting the Creation Noughts uh, Spellchecker Pro extension, which will enable you to use all the Hunspell uh, languages. Now, Hunspell is a user-supported open source spelling system, and you've got spell checkers for really every language you can think of. Um, with the uh, languages also come the hyphenations and you can look at these in the preferences and there are different settings for them but every language of course hyphenates differently they've got different rules 
In many languages, those rules are quite mechanical, so the uh, hyphenation exceptions are relatively straightforward. It's very important when importing to check that you've got the correct encoding, because although English will uh, import from pretty much anything, uh, French and any language which has got accents, uh, particularly in language like, for example, Dutch, where you occasionally have accents, so in the word uh, Belgia, uh, for Belgium, you've got uh, two dots uh, over the E to tell you it's Belgia and not Belgi. Uh, you might not actually have very many of those in the document, and so it might be quite a while before you spot this just random incorrect text. So look at that carefully. Also, use the preferences to select the smart quotes. If you're converting smart quotes, usually in a text file, they won't be smart quotes. If you're converting smart quotes, use the preferences to select the correct kind of uh, smart quotes for your language. That pretty much wraps it up for language. It was a shorter one this time. I hope it was still useful to you. Uh, a lot of people are working multilingually in Quark Express. If you're working into your own language, then of course you'll have uh, your own language version, which will be normally standardized on your language. But if you're working into different languages, Quark Express's uh, multilanguage functions can be very helpful, but you do just need a little bit of work to understand them. Thank you for watching. My name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2017. Please do consider getting a quick copy of the book from Amazon or your local bookstore. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, happy corking.